Hello everyone, welcome to another draft class recap video. Today we're talking about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, so let's begin. Um, so we're almost done with these, wrapping it up. We've got the Titans and the Redskins to go, but today we're talking about Tampa Bay, and a few months ago, I did a seven round mock draft for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and I kind of got chewed out for that because of a certain defensive lineman pick in the fourth round. I digress, it is what it is, but thankfully, the guys doing the drafting for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are not me because this haul is pretty impressive. I'm pretty happy with this. Um, even for somebody who's not a Tampa Bay fan, this seems pretty good, and I'm kind of jealous of some of the picks. The hat should be a dead giveaway, um, but it is what it is, and I think this has been one of those crazier off seasons um, for a team that I can remember because you have jettisoned your uh, you know, quarterback that didn't work out who was the number one overall pick a number of years ago in favor of a 42-year-old Hall of Famer first ballot, uh, Tom Brady, who's won multiple Super Bowls. And it's just kind of bizarre to be talking on uh, about, you know, the upcoming football season where Tom Brady is not a New England Patriot. It's just weird, and I I can't believe, I'm like, I'm excited to watch week one where he trots out in that uniform. So, but anyway, that's the offseason. Um, Tom Brady's in town. Bruce, uh, Bruce Gronkowski's in town. Almost said Gradkowski. That would have been weird. Uh, so let's talk about the draft. Now, there was a lot of, you know, speculation about what this first pick would be. Um, you know, they sort of had like a luxury pick at number 14 overall. Ended up trading up one spot because the tackle who uh, they really wanted was sliding all the way down. And that's where we begin with round one, pick 13, Tristan Wirfs, offensive tackle from Iowa. He's one of the big four, if you remember, Makai Becton, Andrew Thomas, Tristan Wirfs, and um, Jedrick Wills, who went to Cleveland. Uh, Tristan Wirfs, to me, is probably the the one A to Andrew Thomas. I would have picked him had I had a selection of the four offensive tackles if Andrew Thomas would have went first. Um, it could just be because of how well he tested, but I think Tristan Wirfs is absolutely going to contribute and upgrade this offensive line and is absolutely what they needed to do, bringing in Tom Brady, who is not the most mobile quarterback in the league, especially at his age where he's now more statuesque than I would argue ever. Uh, moving on to the second round, round two, pick 45, Antoine Winfield Jr., safety from Minnesota. Um, very jealous of this pick. Um, am I going to give it my magnet of jealousy? You know what? Yes, I am. I'm going to be a little bit of a homer today. Magnet of jealousy goes to Antoine Winfield Jr. just because of the Minnesota connection. You know, his, his father played corner for the Vikings. He went to, you know, Min University of Minnesota. Uh, where he acquired 172 tackles, nine interceptions, six passes defended. He was a 2019 consensus All-American. Uh, fourth in the Big Ten last year in solo tackles with 58, and first in the Big Ten with interceptions with seven. So I'm very excited about this uh, about this pick for uh, Tampa Bay. This is a this is an absolute steal at 45. I thought he could have been a lot higher. I thought he could have been a first round pick. Maybe that's a little bit of a bias sneaking in there. But at the same time, you know, the safety class, none of them went in the first round. So it's really up for debate who really was the best safety. And a lot of people are probably going to say Xavier McKinney or Grant Delpit. But, you know, maybe guys like Jeremy Chin and Ashton Davis and Antoine Winfield absolutely belong in that argument. So very excited to see him in a Tampa Bay uniform. And I kid you not, if things go well, and because they've switched uniforms back to things that don't suck now, <laughs> I wasn't a fan of what we just had. But now that they've gone back to these new uniforms, Antoine Winfield Jr. Uh, jersey might be pretty sweet to own. Moving on to round three, pick 76, Keyshawn Vaughn, running back from Vanderbilt. Pretty good junior year. Um, a little bit of a decline for his senior season, but it's still a pretty impressive uh, campaign overall. Finishes with 572 carries for 3,296 yards, 30 touchdowns. Also a threat out of the backfield and receptions with 66 for 648 yards and three scores, seventh in the SEC in rushing touchdown or rushing yards with 1,028 last year, eighth in the SEC and with rushing touchdowns with nine last year. 7.9 yards per attempt in 2018 is impressive in the SEC, but that was dialed down a little bit last year with just 5.2. Um, this could potentially be your James White of this offense. You know, James White was heavily relied on in New England by Tom Brady, especially in, later in his career where he was um, leading the team in receptions. They would throw these short passes out into the flats. James White would do the rest of the work, get the first downs, move the offense. Uh, that could be something that we see out of, this, uh, out of this pick, and I think it's a pretty intriguing one. Moving on to round five, pick 161, Tyler Johnson, wide receiver from Minnesota, another pick I'm jealous of because he kept sliding down the board. The Vikings kept trading back, and I was like, guys, 
come on, he's right there. Just pull the trigger. And it just never happened. And I think Tampa Bay gets a steal on this one at 161. Uh, finished his career in Minnesota with 213 receptions, 3,305 yards, 33 touchdowns. First in the Big Ten last year with 86 receptions. First in the Big Ten last year with receiving yards with 1,318. Also first in the Big Ten last year in receiving touchdowns with 13. Man's a machine. Um, you got Mike Evans. You've got Chris Godwin. Now you've got Tyler Johnson. You've got Bruce Gradkowski. Oh, I did it again. Bruce Gradkowski. Uh, I don't know why I have... Gradkowski on the mind. That's weird. This this is shaping up to be one of the better situations for Tom Brady that he's had in years. Maybe since maybe since the you know the Randy Moss years. I mean Julian Edelman's been great, and but you know Josh Gordon flopped, Brandon Cooks flopped, Nikhil Harry was disappointing as a rookie. Tom Brady's got some serious weapons now, so uh, it it's going to be it remains to be seen. Who was more responsible for the success of New England? Was it Tom Brady or was it Bill Belichick? And this is the year that we find out. Uh, moving on to round six, pick 194, Khalil Davis, defensive tackle from Nebraska. Sticking with the Big Ten, finishes with 165 tackles, 24 tackles for loss, and 13 sacks. Ninth in the Big Ten last year with eight sacks total. Absolute um, beast on the front line. A defensive line pick. And I was told very specifically that this defensive line for Tampa is already solid gold. So if that is the case, then your defensive line has just gotten way stronger. Uh, moving on, a couple of round seven late picks, 241, Chappelle Russell, linebacker from Temple, uh, probably good for uh, run defense, 237 tackles, 19 and a half tackles for loss, three sacks. And then we had Raymond Calis, 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 I forget, I looked it up prior, but um, I already forget, sorry. Uh, running back for Louisiana Lafayette, uh, finished his career with 236 attempts, 1,845 yards, 15 touchdowns, first in the Sun Belt last year in rushing yards per attempt with 7.6, that's pretty impressive, and eighth in the Sun Belt last year in rushing yards with 886. That is your 2020 NFL draft for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and I'm, I, I gotta be honest, this is a pretty impressive haul. This is up there with one of the better drafts of the year. I like Tristan Wirfs a lot, Antoine Winfield Jr., Tyler Johnson, Keyshawn Vaughn could play a significant role this year, especially with Tom Brady at quarterback. And then you've got a bunch of later round picks that absolutely can fill out depth. Um, this is a very, we could look back on this in a number of years and think that this is a very successful draft, especially uh, if the players at the top pan out, which I think they should. There's no reason to believe that they won't. And in a Bruce Arians run team with his offense, the offensive players should, should absolutely shine. And then I think Antoine Winfield Jr. with his lineage is absolutely going to be a star in this league. So that is my take on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers NFL Draft for 2020. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next one. We've got two more to go.